What is up, everybody? Welcome to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, episode number eight with me, Gamer Noob. We have something to do right off the bat here. We got levels to get, my friends. Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna do Path Paladin of the Holy Light. And we're going for Hell Knight, I believe, right? Yeah. Which means we need Persuasion. Okay. All right. So let's select this. Which means we don't need any more Arcana now. So we'll go Perception, Persuasion. And let's get... I don't know if he'll ever be the best for Athletics, honestly. Hmm. Because Lan is plus 8 already on Athletics, which is kind of crazy. Let's see. I'm gonna give Lan our maybe some of our lures, I don't know. Maybe I do just keep increasing Arcana, because he's the only one that has it at the moment anyway. So yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. <clears throat> and we're taking cleave. Which when I make it a standard action as an attack, I can use if I hit, I get to make an additional attack on another foe that's in melee range with the first. So you're cleaving. And we're going to take Mercy Exhausted, which means every time we use our Lair Hands to heal damage to a target, they're no longer fatigued. Alright, seems good to me. Let's check out our other people real quick. Got Lan here. I'm using a, a Longbow. Zen Archer, yes, definitely. Let's see. I like, make, I like everybody having Perception. It's just one of the things I like. <clears throat> and I'm going to keep making sure that he can do our mobility checks and we'll give him deadly aim and deadly aim is awesome because you get a minus one to hit but you get a plus two on all damage rolls so it's pretty great <laughs> and we'll get point blank master and we'll select the longbow which means now if he's in melee he doesn't provoke attacks Sila, we're turning into a ranged fighter i do believe so let's make sure we get our trickery and our stealth up. And we're yeah, we're getting point blank shot for sure. Because we want precise shot on her so she can fire into melee. So point blank shot's definitely first. And then we got good old another paladin here. Yep, we'll take next paladin level, yep. She's going knowledge world and persuasion. And I don't really care about your mobility. So I'm wondering. Maybe we'll just take UMD for her, since she's our only used magic device person at the moment. Uh, weapon focus, long sword. And we're going to take Shaken on her so they can heal frightened. Perfect. Alright. Let's look around. What's in here? Boots, unidentified. Amulet, unidentified. Summons a pet owl cat. Owl cat? Alright, quit. No owl cat yet. Okay, well, that's fine. What's up, Anivia? Hey, wait, mind if I bend your ear about something? So here's the first, the most important thing, Beth gave you a crucial mission, I get that, and I know you'll get the job done, I saw you in action, but here's the rub, by sending you out on an errand, we're weakening our defenses here. If they come at us while you're gone, I don't know if we'll be able to fight them off. Everything seems clear so far, what else do you wish to discuss? So that rift that the damned beetle left with the scythe? Yeah, well, it cut the city into two, and it's kind of difficult to get across. My scouts tell me there's a halfway decent spot to set up set up a crossing in Market Square, not that any of them have tried to, to make sure, but if you get the mine to go across, I think you're going to have to eventually, you might want to give that square a once over. You want me to stay here and guard the tavern? You what? No, your task is far too important. You can't just hold up here all cozy like waiting for the demons to knock on the door. You need to take the fight to them. But if those freaks try to make a move on this place, Beth will send a runner to get you. If that happens, you leg it back here, alright? Because if you don't, you'll be coming back to an ash pile. Got it? When do you think they'll attack next? 
Your guess is as good as mine. I might not be here. They could attack the whole damn city. Those vermin know you've lost the upper hand and that they're going to push back hard. If things kick off here, you should know that after they attack, some things could be changed beyond recognition. So if you got any business that needs taken care of, you'd better do it soon. Thanks for the warning. See you later. Later. Watch yourself out there. Will do, Anivia. Will do. We're going to wait to talk to Stanton. What's up, Camellia? <coughs> Greetings. Tell me about yourself. You want to know more about me than you already do? Why? I talked to the spirits of Torment's land and they guided me into battle. Help you fight the demons and I swear that you can rely on me in this matter. Is that sufficient? Where did you learn to wield a rapier so well? I had good teachers. Although they don't get all the credit, I'm the most diligent student. Your amulet is quite unusual. Where did you get it? Um, my little trinket? It's so nice of you to notice, but I assure you, this amulet is nothing but a bauble. Can a lady not be drawn to beautiful, useless things? Anyway, as much as I enjoy our delightful conversations, the spirits are calling me and I must respond. Please excuse me. No, I have more to talk to you about. Your speech tells me you're of noble birth. You're most insightful. A fine quality to have. I believe noble birth does not give anyone the right to look down on others. Forgive me if questions disturb you. I couldn't resist such a beautiful. No, I'm good on that one. There's nothing wrong with being a noble. People are not born equal. Still, I believe that being a noble birth does not give anyone the right to look down on others. Is that so? Well, thank you for sharing your opinion with me. No, I won't earn our pie. I have to go. We'll talk later. I won't keep you. Corgus. Here, take this. Yes, it's 2,000 coins. Take your pain and remember the Corgus Worm always keeps his word. You helped me get back to the surface, and I paid du duly paid you for escorting me. Now, speaking of future cooperation... I have a job that would be perfect for someone like you. Naturally, I'll pay generously for your services. What do you mean, a job for someone like me? For an adventurer ready to sell their soul for booze and then lie down drunk in the gutter. Or do you think you're different somehow? A traveling knight, perhaps, of noble of heart, both that coin to your name? You seem a reliable enough ally to me. And you did get me out of those mongrel caves, so why should I care what you do with my money once you've got it? Well, we failed a perception check. Oh. Uh, noble birth doesn't give you the right to behave badly. I would ask that you refrain from such statements in the future. Oh, really? How impudent. Don't dare sell Horgus Worm. How, how to address the rabble? So what does this job involve? You shall be my bodyguard. You see, I have good reason to believe that my mansion here in Canabras. I still have... Well, it doesn't matter. It's none of your business. My mansion is a breathtaking building with a large garden in the wealthy part of the city. Even before the demons attacked, every thief and fraudster in the city had tried to get inside one way or another. I shudder to imagine the state it's in now. I have little hope that my guards were able to hold the mansion during an attack, and I expect that the servants fled when they saw the demons. Only Abadar knows what's happened there since. Therefore, I would ask that you meet me at my mansion and guard me there until I complete my business. I already asked the local paladins for help, but they have no desire to set foot out of the side of this tavern. Damn cowards and traitors, that's what they are. Also, please do take Camellia with you. I trust the girl more than the rest of your gang. She has no birth after all. What kind of reward are we talking about? Thousand coins. See so you can double it. Double the reward, I'll think about it. <laughs> so tense moments pass. Deal. Deal. Marvelous. Most excellent. I'll proceed to my mansion at once and wait for you there. Meanwhile, you needn't hurry. I know the city like the back of my hand. Please, but do hurry unless you want me to lower your reward. Okay. Don't hurry, but if you could hurry. Gotcha. Are you going to be a shop? Huge ungainly man with skin so white. His blue veins are vis visible even at a distance. His bald head is equal for clumpy and pitted. A blood-filled eye stare impassively out from beneath his pale brows. The glass in the albino's large clumsy hands looks dangerously delicate, as if one twitch of those cow's hands would be enough to crush it. A gold medallion engraved with a tanker glint on his neck. What'll it be? Ooh, the medallion you're wearing. It's a sacred symbol, isn't it? Are you a cleric of the Caden Calium? I'm a tavern keeper, best in the city. The best there's ever been, and I pray to the best god there is. So who are you? Jimmel Hawks, a vampire. Are you really a vampire? No. <laughs> How'd you end up in the Crusader City? How did anyone end up here? How did you? Or them? The world is big, but there isn't a place for everyone. People who no longer have a life anywhere else, they end up here. Any news in the city? There are demons everywhere. And you showed up. <laughs> are there any places in the city worth visiting? If you mean places that normal people usually stay well away from, well, there are plenty, like the Pataxian Wine Cellar. Once it belonged to a Pataxian trading house, then King Aravetti came into power in Patax, and the property started changing hands. Soon after, the Southern shop assistant was found in a ditch. Not all of them, mind just his head. Numerian gangsters had taken possession of the place. They wanted to sell something that was stronger than wine on the street, and they ended up in the gallows. Then King Aravetti's number was up, so now the store stands empty and unclaimed. People say the headless ghost wanders the place at night, moaning ghoulishly. Ooh. I hover over these, by the way, so you can pause and read them if you want. I'm not going to read them, but if you want to pause and read them, that's why I hover over them for you. 
Just don't ask me how he makes any noise with no head. I wasn't there. I'd just like to tell it how I heard it. See, so you're not one for talking. <laughs> Show me what you have. Okay, finally. Step one, bulk sell. There we go. Step two, sell the masterworks. How do you best to keep this for demons? I don't know. Make some money. Cold iron masterwork dueling sword. It's a finesse weapon. It's cold iron. It's masterwork. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. We have a magic one of those now. Don't get rid of the magic item. I just don't like to sell magic items. How much are you worth though? A thousand? Yeah, that's not bad. And what do you do? You're a plus one. Nice. Maybe if I didn't already have... Yeah, I want to use a composite. Shared stash, please. Yeah, we'll get rid of those. It's fine. Definitely don't get rid of the magic things. I don't get rid of reagents, that would just be silly. Yes, we're doing a little bit of a bad sorting as well. I don't want to switch them all the way down, so we're going to do it that way. Look how that worked out, just perfectly. Don't, I don't sell potions. And I like keeping these. Porcelain plates. Work. I don't know, cheese seems like something that you would want to keep. Alright, what do you have? Potions. Yeah, we got a lot of cure light wounds, so I think I'll be good on that. Reduce, enlarge. Less restriction and dispels any temporary magical effects. Does not remove permanent effects, which is curses. Gloves of the neophyte. Cantrips. Cast spells against ability to cast the following spells. Oh. Bag of holding. I think. Definitely want bag of holding. Oh, that's a like a recipe? Oh, give me it. And we have lockpicks, so. Uh, we make money on this deal. Deal. I made money on the uh, on trading, and I got a bag of holding, which means now my oh, I love that. <clears throat> we love that. All right. New recipes. You found a new recipe. To learn it, go to your inventory. Okay. I'm assuming you just right-click it. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Loot. Don't mind if I do. Sure, no. Young man with well-traveling clothes and a simple wooden symbol of air still on his chest is efficiently cutting a linen robe and a strip to use his bandages. Despite his visible exhaustion, he works with zeal, singing the tune about red braids and ripe sheaves of wheat under his breath. He raises his warm chestnut-colored eyes to you. Are you one of the Crusaders? Thank you for defending us while defending us whose talents lie off the battlefield. I'm Jerno. Servant of Aristil, pleased to meet you. What are you doing? I only took my holy, holy orders recently, so my god only has only bestowed a little of his power upon me as of yet. Sorry to say that the number of wounded fighters in this tavern is far beyond my power to heal. But there's a reason people say have faith in the gods, but look to yourself first. I may not be able to help the wounded with magic, but can at least cut up bandages. You from around here? No, I'm just passing through Canabra, so I was sailing down the old that old man of ours, the great Selen River, to a village by the name of Chili Creek. I happened to land in a city on the eve of the festival, and I'm ashamed to say that I decided to stay a day to enjoy myself, but I ended up staying in the city longer than I'd bargained for. Chili Creek, where's that? It's a small fishing village. It's not even marked on some maps, but people do live there. What they don't have is a priest. They have no one to heal their wounds, no one to offer prayers for a good catch, no one to give their dead a dignified burial, and the world wound is just a stone's throw away. So I'll be setting sail for Chili Creek to serve my god and my people. 
Once we've held Canabras, I'll be going there. If by the grace of the good gods we all survive this, you should come and visit me sometime. You'll find a village here on the bank of the river. Aren't you a young and inexperienced cleric? Aren't you a young and inexperienced cleric afraid to go to the world, the border of the world wound? I won't lie, I'm afraid, but what can I do? Those villagers are simple people, like you and me. Every day of their short lives is spent doing hard, honest work. That's exactly the kind of life I want. Something simple, but meaningful. If I had centuries ahead of me, like elves and some other races do, I might have spared some 50 years or so to do travel around the world. Or maybe even a hundred, why not? But I don't have time to spare. So I want to spend my short life in the place where I'm needed the most, even if it's dangerous. Especially, if it's dangerous. Use the help of a cleric. Air still knows that I'd be glad to help you, but it's no use. My spells are depleted and I have no training in potions or scrolls. See this robe I'm cutting up for bandages? It's the second to last one. I have to go. May Air still watch over you. And you, my friend. Loot. Give it all to me. Foreign Autumn Haze. Tall, fragile-looking elf sits in front of you, eyes closed. He's pale as a ghost, his arm wrapped in a blood-stained bandage. You spot other bandages on his body under his clothes, but even in such a miserable state, he manages to keep calm. I am Foreign Autumn Haze at your service. Do you need help? Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. A local healer tended to me. Besides, I come from resilient, hearty people. My body will endure both the wounds and the poison delivered through them. I'm Gregor Stone. You can trust me. I might be able to help you. It would be impolite to refuse such a direct and friendly offer. Who's your quarry here in Mendev? I was hunting a fugitive, a, a deskerite by the name of Kalesa. It pains me to admit that the heinous malefactors such as her are among my noble kind. I managed to catch up to her in Canabras, and I wounded her. Then demons appeared, and the city was engulfed in flames. I was injured in the battle that ensued, and couldn't free her soul from its service to her dark masters. I'm sorry for your misfortune. I hope things will turn out differently the next time. There's no need for pity. Our ancient kind is blessed with great longevity. We gain a deeper understanding of the world than other races, and we learn from our lessons for better than anyone else. And that goes for learning from our mistakes as well. I survived, which means I'll be more prepared when we meet next. I'd like to get to know more about you. I won't hold anything back. Not who I am, why I made my way here, or who it is that I'm pursuing. Tell me more about yourself. Other people tend to believe the, the identity of the sum of a person's actions and the events that happened to them. For them, I am one of a long line of warriors of the Kionin. Ki who, since his youth, has dedicated himself to hunting evil and injustice. For them, I am a successful and capable huntsman who has tracked down and slain a great many monsters. But I am an elf, and for me, my identity has a different meaning. It is shaped by the place where I was born and that I love so deeply. I am shaped by what I find beautiful and what makes my heart quicken, by the fears that come to me in the dead of night, by the things I find so intolerable at the sight of them. My very core darkens and fills with poison. Thus, to tell you who I am, I would require many days and much candor, which is more than you and I have at our disposal. Why did you choose to be the hunter of evil? Because I am the son of a noble and proud nation. We are sometimes criticized for our arrogance, but no one dares doubt our honor. When a crime is committed, we cannot turn a blind eye. If we were to abandon our obligation to oppose evil, if we were to surrender this obligation to other races, we would also relinquish our preeminence. Preeminence. Remind me, who is this quarry who brought you to Mendev? I was hunting a fugitive. That's right, remember that. I have no more questions. Yeah, where well, he's hunting evil? We like, we hate evil. I wish to aid you in your hunt. Thank you, but this is my mission, and I'm used to facing all manner of terrors on my own. I do appreciate your willingness to help. If you happen to meet Kalesa, take caution. She has turned many innocent souls to the path of evil, and the darkness has rewarded her with many gifts. Her appearance alone will tell you that. It is warped. The gate skin, the malicious stare of her blood-red eyes, the bestial teeth. She's more of a monster than an elf at this point. <gasps> we just rolled a nat 20, didn't we? Oh my goodness. Yes, her skin is dark. Her hair pre- preternaturally white her red eyes can see perfectly in the dark which to my dismay i've known i've come to know from experience but bright light causes her pain her kind pain i used an alchemical powder that explodes in dazzling flash and she cried out as if i had stabbed her here's this woman is a drow her race is also known as dark or cavern elves and they're rarely seen on the surface i have to go good fortune to you nice let's save before we go down here you never know what's in the basement could be rats Surrender thy soul, Delvin. I hope they protect us. <laughs> I got you again. How many times is that today? Take your jokes and show them, Tiefling. Whoa, easy there, Chief. Don't hit me. Who are you? But also loot. 
Sorry, I just gotta... What's this? Uh-huh. There's three. Oh, this has got to be some sort of puzzle. Maybe somebody will give me some tips down here. I must... Sorry, I need to loot. I apologize, but... You know, it's, it's important. We've got a merchant upstairs, so you know, everything that we can... Snag at the moment is, uh, is worthwhile. What's up, Devlin? Go ahead, don't take too long, though. Hey, Chief! Hey, Dreamboat, come over here! I want to talk to you about something. Something really important. Ooh. Quit bothering the decent people in here, Wolgif, or I'll knock your teeth out. What's it to you, Delvin Dum Dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. Who are you? Wolgif. Wolgif Jeffdo. I deal in useful things. I can get you whatever you want. Anything. But there's just one problem. <laughs> what do you want from me? I'll lay it out for you. Simple job, 30 minutes tops. We go someplace, talk to someone, and in return, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. Some extra rations, no problem. Armor, weapons, scrolls, you name it. It's as good as yours. If you need my help with something, whistle and I'll be there. I'm handy enough with knives, too. And even my magic know-how isn't too shabby. <laughs> what a load of guff. If you were good at magic, you wouldn't be stuck in here now, would you? Don't you listen to him, Chief. He'd find fault with the Queen herself. I'll be useful to have in battle, and I'll sell whatever you want at a reasonable price. It's your lucky day. You won't meet another gem like me in Canabras. Why are you in chains? Does it really matter? Don't get hung up on the past, Chief. Don't look to the future. Live in the here and now. He was caught thieving. Your shadow, what was that? <laughs> get me out of here and I'll tell you. And don't worry, it's not contagious. Can't help you. We need all the help we can get, but I can't help you while you're chained up. How can I free That's you? That's easy. You know, Irabeth, feisty looking gal, always wears armor. You can't miss her. She's the meanest fighter in the whole city. When you see her, put in a good word for me, will ya? Tell her there's this guy, Wolgif, locked up for no good reason in the Defender's heart. Well, for the follies of his youth. And he really wants to get out on bail so he can keep up his good behavior and make a contribution to society. You got that? Will you do it? Yeah, I'll talk to Arabeth for you. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. Knew it the moment I laid eyes on you. We'll talk later. All right. So, let's see here. There is only these three, right? Yeah. What's this? The button won't budge. Okay. Well, okay. The button won't budge. Let's move. So... It's currently down, up, up. We're gonna play with this for a minute. The button won't budge. Okay, so down, up, up doesn't work. What about down, down, up? No. Follow what me. What about down, 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 down? No. Okay. What about? March on. Uh, up, up, down, down. Got it. <laughs> Just keep playing with it. There's only three of them, so it's not hard to do. What do we got? Yellow letter. Half a century ago, our parents fled their homeland of Socorus, terrified of the invading demons. They were certain that the war would be over soon, so they didn't go too far and found the refuge here in Canabras. These were little savings they had to build a tavern where any crusader could get a bowl of soup and a good night rest in exchange for some money and news about their recent victories. The city looked completely different back then. It was a triumphant city full of hope, inspiring songs, and brave paladins and shining army. We praised praise our lady Polara openly and have hope that the lands of our ancestors would be ours again in no time. Things have changed since then though. Our parents have long left the halls. The goddesses to the goddesses halls. Dresden is long gone. The world grows deeper every day and the crusaders seem, crusaders seem to be more interested in fighting each other and as townsfolk than eradicating the demons. Hellrun has gone mad and now puts all his inquisitive, inquisitive zeal into burning witches. Today Canabras is a city of fear and suspicion. We even had to hide our altar of the shimmering maid in the basement so they wouldn't accuse us of demon worship. Oh my. Unidentified helmet. Lots of scrolls. 
And some potions, nice. Onwards. Cool. Yeah, I figured we could get that done because it wasn't it wasn't too difficult with just three options there. Alright. Before we leave, we're definitely gonna talk to everybody and loot everything, so. Well, let's go talk to Staunton. Why not? Save before you talk to him just in case. The dwarf resembles an abandoned citadel, one whose high scrambling walls are still holding fast, but whose empty lightless windows make it clear that all is dead inside. Oh, it's you. Good work back there in the Great Garrison named Staunton Vane. If you've heard rumors about me, just so you know, everything people say about me is true. You need to talk to the... Or what do people say about you? They say I'm a traitor as bad as Ar Arlu Vorlesh, that I'm a disgrace, even among the ranks of the condemned, and that Queen Galfrey should have never spared me, that I belong in the gallows. So you can read those guys. Why do they hate you so much? You really don't know? I'm the reason why the crusade forces are holed up in the fortresses along the edge of the world wound. Instead of bringing the fight to the demons, we used to have a foothold in the wound. The mighty unassailable city of Dresden. We used to have it until it fell, and all because of my stupidity, I gave the enemy our main citadel. I was tied. I, I was tried. They wanted to execute me, and rightly so, but the queen intervened. She said that I should live and, and fight in order to undo what I had done. So that's how I lived, decade after decade, fighting the, in the condemned. As you can see, I have, to fi I have fixed nothing and I have earned no one's forgiveness. Are you going to spit in my face too? Wouldn't surprise me. You can keep, you keep living and fighting with no hope of anything better because that's what the queen ordered you to do. There's honor in that. I hope you earn, for I hope you earn forgiveness. Thank you. From the depths of my soul, I thank you. But I haven't had... And haven't had hope for a long, long time. The whole city fell because of you. How is that possible? What do you mean, how? If you don't trust the word of a, of a condemned, go ask somebody else, like my little brother Joran. And if you still don't believe it, what's it to me? But if you're about to ask me to recount the story of my disgrace for the thousandth time, don't. You really don't have any friends? Couldn't have survived this long if I was completely alone. Joran, my little brother, he keeps me going. He's never abandoned me. Everyone else shies away from me like they might catch what I've got. Even finders in the condemned console themselves by thinking I got stripped of my rank, but at least I'm not at least I'm not stomping. Commander Tirabade seems to be the only person in the whole army who remembers that I'm a soldier and not a drudge. She has no qualms about taking me into battle. She's had some mud flung in her in the past, or so I hear. That's what she tries to keep an open mind about people. So I'm surprised that she's the only one to hold on to her sense of reason in this farce. So many years in the condemned, surely you've paid your penance by now. It's not up for me to decide. My life is in the Queen's hands. The condemned isn't the worst part. All those years I have prayed to Torag for forgiveness, countless times I've gone to his priest, countless times I've kneeled before his altar. If only the father of Dorvenkind would answer my prayers just once, not to restore what I've lost, but just to tell me that I'm still one of his children. But it seems he doesn't have to give a damn about me. What can I expect from mere mortals when my own god doesn't even think I deserve redemption? We need to talk... To the elf who calls himself the storyteller. Do you know where I can find him? The storyteller. Hmm. A strange old fellow, that one. He used to sit with me for hours, asking all, about all sorts of things. He never offered judgment or comfort, just listened. First I wanted him and his questions as far away from him as possible. Later I realized talking to him did ease my burden a little. Hope he is alive and well. He's completely blind and feeble too, so if he's alone in the city, well, you probably know what that means. I don't know. I do know one place he might be. Look for him in the Blackwing. It's a library. Here, I'll show you on the map. I don't know what... Used, used to libraries to a blind elf, but he loved the place. He would sit there all day and night. Thank you, I have to go. Go on then, maybe we'll see each other again. Maybe. Don't give up, Staunton. Anabra's Crusader, Eagle Watch Crusader. I'm sure they don't have anything to actually talk about. Yeah. Citizen, 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 citizen. Let us be off. Anevia went over here. What's up, Anevia? Anevia's in her muted colors blends all sparkling into the background. She appears relaxed, but her unseemly unfocused eyes are taking in everything around her, tracking and filtering potential threats. The only tell is the way she drums her fingers on her hip near her weapon sheath. She shows no sign of injuries and confidently leans on her previously broken leg. She pretends to have just noticed you, even though she wants you to approach from afar. Oh, hey! See how they patch me up? Now I can run, jump, or dance a jig if I feel like it. Any suspic suspicious places in the city I should pay attention to? There were a couple of spots I wanted to check out, but I didn't have time. If there really is a den of cultists there, it'd be good of you to swoop in and bust some heads. You don't even need a search warrant. First one is the Soap and Thread. It's a funny little tailor shop that doesn't take any orders and never buys any fabric. They always seem oh so busy. They're busy with something and they're alright, but sewing ain't it. Second one is the Alchemy Shop, Topaz Solutions, and they trade in everything, not just healing potions. Judge by the ingredients they've been buying on the Black Market, there's something fishy about the chemical rituals going down in that place. Tell me about yourself. Be happy to, but there's nothing, kind of nothing to tell. So what's interesting about me? Where are you from? 
nowhere. I was blown in by the wind and we found in a cabbage patch. Sorry, it's an old habit of mine. I don't like blabbing about my past, but you saved my skin, so I guess I kind of owe it to you not to clown around, right? I'm from the doll, and I wouldn't wish my homeland on my worst enemy. You've heard of the place, I'm sure. Ruled by monsters and that aren't alive nor dead in the official religion of the cult of Zong Kuthon. I grew up in a slum like a weed between the cobblestones. I didn't have a dad, but I had lots of aunts and uncles. My mom's cronies. No prize for guessing the kind of business she was involved in. They gave me a set of lockpicks as soon as I could hold a spoon. While other kids were picking their nose, I was picking pockets. When I was twelve, the monks of the Silent Shroud came for us. Creepy guys with their mouths sewn shut. Their guards in this rush. Mom gave me to her friends, and we hid in a secret temple of Desna. I never saw my mom again. I lay low in the temple for the next few years, keeping my head down. I watched the floors, fetched water, listened to sermons. Funny thing, well, after a while, I started liking Desna's teachings. But as soon as I was old enough, I was out of there. I left Ndal and got as far away as I could. Quite a ragtag group you've got here, from nobles to street thieves. <laughs> you've got that right. Only the best for you. What do you do if the knights and nobles fail to save the world? The lowlifes are our only hope. How did you meet Irabeth? I was bumming around time in a while back and doing this and doing this and that. Desna and temples sometimes gave me old jobs, you know. They need someone with skills, some new people with skills like mine. On the surface, I was fine, I guess. After all the freedom of the River Kingdoms should have seemed like heaven, my chance to sit back and enjoy life, but I wasn't happy. She wasn't enjoying my new life. I was here all alone. No one cared about me, and I didn't care about anyone either. I struggled to find a reason to drag myself out of bed every morning. Tying a stone around my neck and jumping into the nearest river started to look pretty appealing. One day, I was hired to follow some fellows who local authorities suspected were Razmiran spies. I was stupid. I made a rookie mistake and they caught me. It's like my body had decided what to do with my mind. had been fighting. They finally put, put me out of my misery. Get someone else to kill me, since I didn't have the guts to do it myself. They grabbed me and I thought that they'd gut me on the spot, but instead they hogtied me and dragged me off. And just like an animal going to the slaughter, my only thought was, let's get this over with. They brought me back to the stinking cave, threw me on their altar, and I realized it was who it was. Kuthites from Nadal. They tracked me down. After all those years, I didn't care about care anymore. Wouldn't even have cared if they'd eat me or whatever. We all got some time, right? Gotta go sometime, right? So I was lying there staring at the knives pointed at me when fate rolled the dice and I hit the jackpot. Irabeth, there she was, storming into the cave. Picture it. I'm lying on the altar with these face wielding these knife wielding maniacs around me, and suddenly Irabeth storms in. I thought it was Iombade herself, fierce in her shining armor with gleaming sword rays. She made quick work of those scumbags, chopped them up just like that, didn't even have time to blink. She untied me, and then she looked at the papers they had on the table and started swearing like a sailor. So much for Iombade. How did you and Irabeth end up at Canabras? After almost becoming a human sacrifice, I knew I never wanted to leave Irabeth's side. Desna knows I fell for her instantly, and I fell hard. My misery was gone, and when Irabeth showed me what it was in the pa what was in those papers proved that the cultist had a nest in her home city will offer to help her without a second thought she must have figured i couldn't wait to get my revenge on the cultist but i didn't give a damn about them it was her i'd go anywhere with her even on a crusade or into the jaws of a dragon but i took it to life in canabras like a duck to water i used to be an outcast wherever i went but half the crusaders are the same after all who volunteered to tangle demons on the edge of the abyss you gotta either be a goody two-shoes or too much with too much honor and free time or a misfit with no life out in the normal world with normal people people come here to run away from their debts their past from themselves so i fit right in so likely what's it like living with Irabeth? it's like living without her i wouldn't be seriously if i were alone i'd definitely be gone by now sure sometimes we argue can't deny that sometimes we bang our fists on the table and yell so loud the wall shake but that's all about order business but at home i'll give you an example i've kind of always wanted to move out of the broom closet that we call house and into somewhere cozier it ain't like they take a vow of poverty at the eagle watch but every month somehow most of her money is spent on crusader business I'm sure i get mad about it but it's part of why i love her so much you know Irabeth has that thing that matters most for a person of purpose in life she's always got a reason for whatever she's doing her whole life is a crusade and i i just drifted around like a leaf in the wind until Desna brought us together now she's the meaning of my life so it really makes no difference if we live in a mansion or under a bush thank you for your answers thanks for asking telling you all this kind of making me feel better what are your responsibilities in the eagle watch Nothing official, I'm not even a knight, you know, I just like hanging around. You sure you want to know the details? Catching traitors and spies and cultists is no walk in the park, it's a delicate job. You can't always do it all within the letter of the law. What if we surprise some of the suspicious blighters with an official search? Everyone will know about it long before start, or starting with their cronies. Then again, sneaking into people's houses at night ain't exactly legal. Crusaders can be doing stuff like that, can't they? Well, I'm not a, exactly a knight. I have to go. Alright, you watch yourself now. There's Lan over there. Let's talk to Lan. What's up, Lan? Oh, that's a lot of reading. Here for a chat. Been waiting for you to come and see me. <laughs> what strange beast have you taken into your party? 
I'd like to know more about you. Let me guess, your first question is, can you wear a hat with your one horn, am I right? You speak common for the rest of your tribe. Funny enough, common isn't all that common underground, but your observation is correct. I used to live on the surface with my parents for a while, and I had a chance to learn a couple things. The language and the fact that every present who sees my skilly bug screams demon and runs away. I don't know if you're interested, but my mom wasn't from the underground tribe. She was a smuggler, the kind that used the dungeon of Canabras to secretly move and store goods. One time, two gangs couldn't have out how to share a prime cut, got into a fight, and the winners threw the losers down a hole, dead and looking, dead and a living alike. My dad went to check if the corpse was anything useful on them and found a girl from the surface barely clinging to life. An incredible feeling sparked between them, or maybe the girl just liked men with scales and a cat nose. That might be it. One way or another, they got he got her back on her feet, and he later even left his home caves. She left smuggling behind, and they gained an honest life together. It's a delightful story of how old land came into this world. The next chapter, however, my family and I never stayed in one place for long. We lived sometimes on the surface, sometimes underground. We couldn't find a place to call home. Living in the caves was hard on my mom. My dad's appearance raised too many questions in Mendiv. And they were at war with the demons, after all. In the end, my parents decided to stop making each other miserable and separated. My father and I returned to our tribe. I think the peasant screaming demon had something to do with it. Or maybe your dad just couldn't stand a life without rat tail soup. I wouldn't rule out that possibility. Did you come with me so you can see the surface again? I... No, that wasn't it. I still have much patience for certain types of creatures. Demons, I mean. If they want to destroy Canabras, I'll be on the side of the people they're attacking. Land. You're my companion. Your companions should trust each other. I'm counting on you to give me an honest answer, not excuses. I guess you're right. It shouldn't have been so evasive. It's just that things are hard to talk about. My family, for example. My birth. Hell, take me. It turned out to be a great misfortune for my parents. All because I'm relatively healthy. I'm the best thing that can come from a marriage between a cave-dwelling mongrel and anyone from the surface. A healthy child with the right number of hands and feet. No apparent defects. No missing organs or other problems. They saw hope in me, so I risked having more children. They thought it would somehow be alright. I could have had four brothers. The first was born two years after me and died three years later. He didn't have a nose, nothing even remotely resembling one. He could only breathe through his mouth. Mom and Dad were afraid to take their eyes off him for fear he'd choke and suffocate on something, but in the end, it was his weak heart that killed him. Then there was another pregnancy and birth. I pretended I was sleeping, but snuck out of my bedroom and listened under the door. All those hours was very strange, but I never heard the new word screaming. Mom moaning, yes, the priest praying. Then I dared to open the door and looked inside. The priest stood there very pale. One of them was holding a small object that fit in his palm. He asked, do you know what that is? And the other said, I think it's a head. You have to keep going if it hurts you. Hell no, I started to tell you and I'll make it to the end. You want to know why I followed you to the surface? Well, here's the reason. It turned out that this time mom was expecting triplets. The first of the babies was born in pieces and the other two didn't live long enough to draw their first breath. About three weeks later, my father took me to the caves. He didn't want to... He didn't want to leave, I could see it in his face, but I think my mom and he decided it together. The curse my people have carried since the first crusade stood between them, not to mention the four dead babies, and in old age was rapidly taking its toll my father. To return to the cave, he only lived another four years. So if you're asking why I decided to go up to the surface and join the crusaders, well, the answer is I've always wanted to. I was afraid to leave my tribe, but it always haunted me that I'd die in a world where four crusades could do nothing to stop the beast from the abyss, and the number of victims kept growing. I want to change that, or at least try to. And if changing things is too much to ask, then at least get a little revenge. The ones who were behind the world owed me a great debt. The lives of four brothers, all my mother's tears, and my father's broken heart. It's a lot. It's so much killing that it's so much that killing a couple of demons won't do it for me. I want to do something real, and I'm ready to pay any price. Call my personal crusade if you'd like. I used to think that things would be better if I were never born, but now I think I was born for this to settle the score. Why don't you go up and join the crusaders before? I think you should abandon my tribe. I'm their best hunter. They'll have much harder without me, but now that the demons have destroyed Canabras and the caves have collapsed on our head, sitting and waiting it out just wasn't an option anyway. I'm more useful up here and than I am down there. Plus, the chief let me go, which means my debt to the tribe has been paid. Would you like to find your mother? No. I don't want to meet her, not because I feel any resentment. It's just that she's a half-elf. She's barely got her first gray hair, and I'll be a ramshackle old man. She's buried enough children. There's no need to make her witness the death of another. I hope you understand. Very, very sorry. Although I'm very lucky, I met someone who not only helped me to choose my right path, but is happy to listen to me whining. Your parents loved and survived hardship, but that doesn't mean that the same thing will happen to you. What if you find true love, someone who won't leave you no matter what? And break my beloved's heart when I die in her arms five years later? It's a fine thing to do to the person you love. Then again, there's a chance I'll inspire some tragic bard to write a tearful ballad. Thanks for sharing, Len. Thanks for listening. No, I don't need you to tell me my story again. <laughs> Mongos have such short lifespans, but you don't look like you're getting older dying. How old are you? I'm as old as I look, no surprises there, but remember Sol? He's ten years older than me. I remember him back when he was a fearless warrior, and day by day I watched him turn into an old man, him and my father. 
happens very quickly. First you miss a shot because you didn't see the target as clearly as you used to. You think it's because your eyes are tired. You tell yourself, oh, I'll get better tomorrow. Then you notice you're having trouble breathing. That climbing is harder than before. Your fingers stop bending. You have to tie your sword into your hand. You can't even put your greaves on without help. When you're washing your face in the stream, sometimes you get sight of a gray hair, wrinkled old man you don't recognize. And this goes on until one day you come across a cave beast and you realize you cannot run it. My dad kept diaries marking all the signs, and I saw it too. The last year I had to help him get out of bed, help him dress, and remind him to eat. Sometimes he forgot my name. I told him that we should have stayed on the surface, and he joked that dodging a goddess was be goddess dodging a goddess was behavior unworthy of a crusader. He meant phrasma. Every morning I wake up to check on how I feel, but there are no signs yet. Even so, I know I don't have much time. I need to do something useful and before I forget why I came. Do I talk to you about Windu? Alright, sure. Are you sure? Alright. Tell me you about your connection to Windu. My connection to Windu, I mean, where do I start? We grew up together, trained together. She was the chief's daughter. She was groomed to be the best all her life, and then I came along. We were rivals, but we dragged each other out of the tight spots, too. I've always been drawn to grand heroic gestures, sometimes idiotic ones, where Windu liked to roam and explore passages, finding new caves, and making maps. She wanted to be a great huntress, the one who'd make it to the shield maze, but instead, she... Better if she died. The death of a friend is painful, but watching a friend become a shadow of the former self is unbearable. She doesn't think she's a shadow of her former self. Of course, she thinks she did everything right, but the second she started to doubt herself, she'll have to face the truth. To admit she's just a cannibal that demons use as they wish. She wants to get stronger and stronger, but for what? I'll never understand what drives her. Were you just friends, or were you more than that? Wow, you really don't pull your punches, do you? There was a time when I asked myself the same question. Windu knew me better than anyone. She understood me better than anyone, but she was the first girl I ever... You know. But we never loved each other. Maybe I could have grown to love her, but it always seemed like she never understood what love was. Maybe she just wasn't capable of those kinds of feelings. Thanks, found out everything I wanted to know. So... Can you wear a hat with your one horn? Sure I can, but certain designs don't suit me too well. If I did everything I wanted to know, thank you. Tell me about your people. Of course, what would you like to know? It's like living in your caves. Oh, imagine that the entire world, there's only a few hundred there's only a hundred, few hundred like you. There's not an inch of fertile ground anywhere. Nowhere to grow brain for bread or cotton and linen for cloth. Your neighbors are beasts who want to eat you or parasites who want to infect you with their larvae and then eat you. And it's not that bad because you can try to eat most of the things that are trying to eat you, sometimes at the risk of being poisoned, sometimes with almost no risk at all. In the worst years, there's not a single living thing anywhere to be found, predator, or prey. And that's when you eat mushroom soup. I'd say three times a day, but there's barely enough for once every three days. But life underground has upsides, pun intended. There's no risk of losing your head, or the roof over your head. There's no bad weather, not counting the earthquakes, of course. They're really descendants of the first crusaders. We're like demon spawn, aren't we? Sad but true, without the... Without the demons, there'd be no mongrels. The magic of the world wound that affected our ancestors made our children the way we are. Like most in our tribe, Chief Soul fancies himself a descendant of the underground crusaders. The ones our heroic ancestors left to guard the caves. I don't know if it's true or not, the angel, the angel that came to our caves for a reason. Maybe he remembered us. Those were evil and dangerous times of the first crusade. Hundreds of crusaders began having children, and their babies were born with fangs and horns and warts that covered half their face. People don't like the new look. The Inquisitor sure didn't. So our ancestors fled persecution and made a home for themselves down there under the ground. They probably intended to find a cave cure for their children and hoped to return in time, but it never happened. Instead, the world wound's terrible legacy was passed down from generation to generation. Mongrel parents can only guess what their child will look like. Each of us is born with a new mutation. Many mutations are fatal. Down in the caves, we don't usually congratulate the family for the birth of a child until they turn at least three. Most don't even get a name before that. There's no point. It hasn't been that long since the First Crusade. Why do you know so little about your ancestors? Our lives are much shorter than most uplanders. Up here, only a few generations pass, and many live... If you remember the old chorus as it stood untouched by the demons. Queen Galfrey, for example. But where we live, mongrels start getting much... Getting old much earlier than humans, much faster and with much devasta more devastating consequences. Few live past 40 and fewer live even long enough to die of old age. Hunger, disease, and monsters from the deep are more effective killers than time. So for us, the first story, the story of the First Crusade is a legend that happened generations ago. There's no living witnesses. We have the tale of the wise and great ancestors who left us to stand guard in the catacombs. But in reality, I suspect they were the desperate wretches who couldn't figure out how to dispel the demonic plague and who were abandoned by their own kind. You have a way to tell day and night? You can't see the sun in your caves. Every Mongol settlement has a big gong which we treat like a relic. The gong keeper hits it twice a day to mark the beginning and end, but this custom doesn't keep time very precisely. Every muggle child is stuck up to the gong to strike it at the wrong time at least once, just out of pure mischief. Nothing can keep me away from it, not even the fact that I only have one ear, which means it would take double the punishment once I was caught. So sometimes the wrong strikes get mixed in with the right ones, and the tribe can find itself jumping up to greet the morning in the middle of the night. Do mongrel tribes fight each other? There are some skirmishes I've been forced to kill my kinfolk before. Fights all, most often break out over food. We have laws in the caves, written and unwritten rules that we follow. We respect one another's right to live, but hunger push a person over the edge. I've never, never even count on that. Stolen someone else's food. Kill 
but I can't understand those of my kin who try. To hear your kids begging for food and not being able to feed them is terrifying. You're the only member of the Neatholm tribe to your, call your people mongrels. Why is that? Uh, because all of Galorian calls us that? I don't see the point of all this hemming and hawing over what we're called. Anyone who finds it offensive or takes issue with it can lead the charge against the name. No one's stopping them, but personally I'm not picking up a fight over something as unimportant as a name. I think you found out everything I wanted to know. It's nice to see someone know my ramblings and useful to someone. What do you think of life on the surface? It must be different from life underground. Of course, as far as living conditions, the surface is definitely a better place to be. It's easier to get good food and water, not to mention a building a house. And even grow a few things. In older, well-established settlements, you don't have to deal with anything scarier than rats and maybe fox stealing your chickens. As for the kind of your kind of lives you have, I heard a story about a demon worship was abducting a whole family of sacrificing them one by one while the others watched. There was a brave crusader knights nearby, and they killed the villains and saved everyone. And I heard another story. A young blacksmith lost his arm in a fire, couldn't work to feed his wife and baby. They tried their best, mainly from hand to mouth, but there was st they were still destitute. In the end, the desperate blacksmith robbed a traveler one night on the road. There was some brave crusader knights nearby, and they caught the robber and threw him in prison. Not long after, his wife smothered their baby and hanged herself. Up here, the same person can rightly say he's protecting the innocent from demons, and then look the other way. Well, the same innocent starves because they were born into a poor family. Queen Galfrey belong prolongs her life with sun orchid elixirs that cost enough to feed an entire city. Back in our caves, everyone is equally poor, and if one person starves, the whole tribe starves. We don't abandon our own in times of trouble, and that's the power of a tribe. The law of the surfaces are made so that some get everything and others get nothing. I might be just be a naive fool from the caves, but I just don't understand how it's possible to have so much more and share so much less. Anyway, look what I'm talking to you. You must know life on the surface better than I do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I never leave a needy person in trouble. I've been given more than most, which means I'm now more able to help others. A fitting reply. Don't take my words as a reproach. I like grumbling as much as cracking jokes. You said you were prepared to risk your life to do something meaningful. What do you exactly do you mean? To invent a new salad and have it named after me. Truth be told, I don't know. It would be much easier if all I really wanted was to kill demons, then a few more demons, then more demons after that. Good honest rage and no needless brooding. I think I actually envy the warriors who can live like that. But I can't. If life's taught me anything, it's that there are no easy choices. Dying a glorious death isn't enough. Some heroes of the crusade did that, and they saved an entire settlement, so wrecked the ward stones. Their actions kept the lands of Mendev safe for decades, and that's what I want. For my dumb short life to have some meant something. You think I want an exaggerated opinion of myself? Some scaly freaks crawl out of the cave and want to take control of the Wardstones and flaunt Ioma Day's banner. Any fool can charge to the front lines of the demonic armies and die there, but what good will that do? I want something meaningful, you know, even if I have to pay the highest price, especially if I have to pay it. There are plenty of worthier people who need to survive this war and tell everyone else what nutcases we are. Thank you for your answer. So long. Whew. That was a lot. Now, we have... It appears a few more people to talk to. So I'm going to call it here, guys, and we're going to finish up talking to people in the next episode because I'm dying. But that's going to do it for me, guys. See you in the next one. Peace. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you've got anything to say, go to the comments below. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the bell. If you want to see more, check out this video down here. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.